Hey, hey guys, Birdie here, and I am doing the March Joy Box tutorial. It's the Cottontail Farms Carrot Patch sign, and this is honestly the take two of the video. Um, I had started recording the video about 20 minutes ago and realized that something happened with my video and I've lost the first 20 minutes. But we are going to do a take two and I will start over. So some of the items have already been painted but I am still going to show you how to do it. It will just be more of a recap and so yeah. Thanks to technology we are doing a part two. So at any rate, let's talk about what's in your box to start with. So you're going to have the insert here, right? Um, and this comes every month. One of the things that I want to point out to you that gets asked a lot is where can I find the tutorials and things like that. So um, depending on where you're watching, you can, one, find the tutorials in the Facebook Joybox group. Um, they are all listed there. Or you can go to redbirddesigns.com, go to the Joybox tab, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll find the tutorials listed there if you don't want to be on Facebook for um, the afternoon while you're crafting. Um, the tutorials are there, and also the member space area, so if you needed to update anything. Um, the other thing is, is if at any point you get your package and it's damaged, or missing items, please let us know. We want to make sure that you get a replacement sent or a new item sent as soon as possible so you can get crafting. Um, and that is at no extra cost to you. Um, so the email for that is support, and that's listed on your insert, support at redbirddesigns.com. Just let us know what happened, and we will get that replacement sent out to you. Okay, the other thing um, is what is included in your box. So this is a 12 by 14 sign. You're going to have your backer board, the main piece here, the pink. You're going to have the frame, this uh, whitewashed frame. Then you're going to have a smaller backer piece or insert piece that's this uh, whitewashed here. You're going to have the cottontail farm letters, the carrots, the bunny with the cards are all one piece, and then the carrot patch here. And then the little um, scarf is separate. And the reason I did that was because I love the bunny without the scarf, and I love the bunny with the scarf, so I wanted to give you guys the choice for that. So that's a separate piece you can either add or not. Um, and then you'll also notice in your kit there's two tiny little... Um, triangle pieces and the triangle pieces are to go underneath this part of the scarf just to give it a little more support um, and so we're not going to paint those or anything just don't lose those and um, that is what comes in your kit then you also have six paint pots you've got the white here and again I've already started painting part of this so we're just kind of doing a recap you have the white, the blue, the black, the green, the orange, and then this beautiful dusty rose color. You get two super glues this month and um, two makeup sponges. You also have your sanding block for creating some worn edges if you want to create a rustic look or it also the sanding block helps if at any point when you're painting um, if the wood fibers start to raise up which they sometimes do when they get wet that wood the fibers just kind of stick up and it starts to create a rough texture if that ever happens while you're painting the sanding block is there to knock down those fibers so what you'll do is let's say this area is a little rough you just come in with a light brushing or a light, um, a light uh, sanding and knock those fibers down. You don't want to sand it to the point where it removes the paint, just enough to give it a nice smooth finish again. So that's what your sanding block is for. And then you also have your chip brush. You have a small 
uh, flat brush and then a liner brush. And then we have your um, easel or plate stand and these are just a little something special to help hold your stand or help hold your sign. So they slot together like this and then they sit in and it will hold this up on a um, shelf or wherever you want to display this. Now if this is a sign that you would like to hang, I recommend a command strip. Um, I love using those command strips um, because um, this is a thinner wood, making it lightweight. Um, putting in like a sawtooth hanger or something on the back um, would damage or poke out the front. So a command strip on the back easily holds these up and then you can take it down at the end and not damage your walls either. So they can go anywhere with those command strips. Makes it super easy. Okay, and then let's talk about what you're going to need. Um, really, it's just masking tape and baby wipes or a damp paper towel or damp cloth, a jar for cleaning your brushes and, you know, make sure to protect your surface and then a, um, a rag for cleanup. So those are the items you're going to need. Not a lot this month. Okay, so let's just go back and start from the beginning. Like I said, this is take two. I apologize. Um, I lost that first part of the video. I'm not even sure what happened. Hope Maybe I'll get it back and I can clip it back in. I'm not sure. Anyways, starting with the backer board. Actually, nope, I'm going to take that back. What we want to do is take our little pieces and get them taped down so that we don't lose them. So that's where the masking tape comes in handy. Um, using, you're going to just tear off a piece of tape, sticky side up, and then just attach all of your pieces. One thing to note is try and put your pieces in as you would read them properly so that you know you're painting the right side of those pieces. Also, the backer board has the letters etched in or scored in. So I can see that this carrots or the C sits this way. The A has the thin side on the left, the thicker side on the right, and those those type of things. So um, I lay mine out and then kind of compare it to this, making sure everything's on the right side. If you get it wrong, no big deal. You'll just paint the other side and not a big deal, right? Um, I'm not going to paint the bun or tape the bunny down. I can hold that. I didn't tape down the carrots. Again, that's a bigger piece. And then the Cottontail Farms, I taped down here. And then the um scarf I did take down. Now the one thing to note is I don't have my little rectangle or my little triangles and I thought I did but I would recommend taping your little triangles to your scarf piece just so that they're um, not getting lost okay. All right now that we've got everything ready to paint we can come in and we're going to start with our large backer board. So what I did here, I'm painting mine with the dusty rose color. You can paint it whatever color you want. Um, and I did use my um, chip brush for this. And to put on the first coat, we want to put a watered down coat. So I took out my dusty rose and I took my chip brush. I dipped it in my water, tapped off most of that. I don't want it dripping, but right now all of my, there's a bunch of water sitting in my bristles, right? So then I'm going to just dip it in the dusty rose paint put a little bit of paint on there and brush that in. That water is gonna help that first coat spread really easy. 
so that you're not struggling with trying to paint the wood. Wood is super porous and so we want to make sure that that first coat is watered down um, and sometimes we even water down the second coat just to help it spread a little easier. But that first coat, we really want to make sure to water down to help spread it on that porous surface. And then it also creates that first seal on the wood. So the next time we paint the wood surface, it's not nearly as porous and it's a little easier to spread. So add water, grab a little bit of paint, not a lot, and then just brush it on. And I'm dropping some, some water here. Um, and so I just did that all the way around. Remember, you do not need to paint inside this triangle because our inner piece is going to sit there. So don't waste your paint and time painting inside of there. Okay. All right. So once we've got this painted, uh, we're going to put that aside to dry. The next step is to paint our frame and our inner piece here. When you're painting your inner piece, you'll notice that we have all of these scored marks. This helps us determine the placement of our items. So you can go ahead, the score marks are fairly deep, they're really narrow, but they're fairly deep. So you can go ahead and just paint right over them and you're still gonna be able to see where to place your items. So don't feel like you have to work your way around all of these little bits. That's the great thing about these score marks is that we can still see it after the fact. So for this, I am creating a whitewashed, um, a whitewashed finish. And I'm gonna use my baby wipes for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my baby wipe in half, fold it in half again, just to give me some thickness. And then I'm just going to wrap my finger with it. And I'm going to use my finger to apply that paint. So we're going to dip this in the paint and then we're just going to come out and start scrubbing that paint on our surface. Now, depending on how dark or light you want your whitewash to be will determine how, how much paint you use. So I wanted mine to be on the light side. So what I did is I dipped it in and then I offloaded some of that paint on my palette here. And that made sure I didn't have too much paint on my baby wipe. So when I start to scrub it on, it's a really light, light color. Um, if you wanted it to be more white, then you would just add more white paint to your baby wipe and not do that offload, okay? So just keep that in mind. And again, just go right over those score marks, okay? And so I did that with my inner piece. I just took a few minutes and scrubbed on some white there, and then I did it with my frame. The other thing to take note of as you're painting is whether you're going to paint your edges or not. I personally do not paint my edges for two reasons. One, I am a little bit lazy and don't want to paint all the edges. That seems like a lot of work, especially like when you're doing all of these tiny detail pieces. Trying to paint inside of these is too much of a hassle for me. The other reason I don't is I like the way that this dark edge looks. I think it helps pop the pieces off the... Um, the surface I and mean, they think it makes it just look a little more 3d so I don't paint my edges with that being said I also make sure when I'm painting that I don't you know drag paint off the edge like that because if I start right here and drag this way if I had paint on here I would get paint on the edge so I try to remember to start in the middle and brush out. So you'll see me do that quite a bit. I start in the middle and brush that way. That just helps me keep the paint off the edges so I don't have a mess. If I do end up painting the edges, I take just a clean baby wipe and I'll just wipe the edge of my um, sign or piece, whatever it is, to remove the paint. 
If the paint dries as I'm working and I don't notice it until I'm starting to glue my pieces down and I'm like, oh dang it, there's a huge glob of paint there. There's a couple things that you can do. You can take your sanding block and sand the paint away. If that doesn't work, I typically just grab a black Sharpie or a black marker or even a brown marker and I'll just uh, mark over the paint and turn it black or dark brown, whatever you have on hand. So that works too to help clean up those edges. Okay. Um, so we've got our frame whitewashed. We've got our inside whitewashed. There's one more thing before we continue that I do want to mention is um, I try and think about how each of you want to put your own artistic style in the sign or do something a little different or you each have your own preferences to things. And so if you would prefer not to do a carrot patch uh, bunny or maybe something else, you want to do something else completely in regards to you know, the lettering or you want to change the placement of it, I do want to remind you that on the back of this, there are no score marks. So say for instance, you wanted to um, maybe just put the bunny here and paint hello here. You could do that. Um, or maybe you wanna put the bunny here and paint some care or some Easter eggs in here and say happy Easter. Um, or maybe you have little um, styrofoam eggs that you want to cut in half and glue on here. Just a few examples of what you could do. Just let you know that there's always a backside of these wood pieces that are blank and you can um, change it up that way. Or maybe you just want to change the location. Maybe you want carrot patch up here and cottontail on the bottom or maybe you want cottontail curved around the sign. I think you get the point that you can use the back to do something different. So just keep, um, just wanted to let you know that. So, all right, these two pieces are painted. So now we are gonna go and start, um, actually I'm gonna paint my second coat on my uh, sign here. I'm just going to grab my drink here. Whoops. Get a quick little drink. Okay. And now we are back to the point where I lost my video. So this is real time now. All right, we're gonna get our chip brush out. And I am gonna get just a little bit of water in there. Not as much as the first, but I do like to have a little bit of water in my brush, have it a little bit damp, um, just to help me push that paint around a little bit. We can see this second coat is going on very nicely. It's covering up that splotchy first coat. The first coat is always pretty typically splotchy. Keep that in mind as you're painting. Just having a little bit of that water in my brush has really helped get this paint to flow a little bit better. Okay. Just kind of smoothing out my brush strokes, doing some light brushing motions, kind of smoothing those brush strokes out. And there we go. That is done. 
second coat on. So we'll move that aside. And we're gonna start painting our little pieces here. Let me pick up this pink paint so I don't get it on my other pieces. I highly recommend as a crafter to have some baby wipes handy because they make it so easy for cleanup. Okay, let's pull out our little guys. And let's see, I'm gonna start by painting, since I have my pink out, I am going to um, paint the scarf real quick. And I'm gonna use, for most of this, I'm gonna use my makeup sponges. Now we gave you two makeup sponges, but if, for those of you who have been with us for a little bit, you know that I love to make my makeup sponges stretch as far as possible. I like to get multiple uses out of them and I don't like to clean them. So what I do is I'll typically cut them in half long ways. And this allows me to have two applicators and I use the large end to apply my paint, okay? So I have two there and I'll cut this one in half as well because I have a couple colors here. And then um, I like to get multiple projects out of them. So for instance, let me just grab one that's in my bucket over here if I have any. Oh, I do. So here's one I've cut in half and you can see that there's paint here that's hardened. So what I'll do is after I'm done, I'll just leave it on my palette and I'll let it dry for maybe an hour um, or however long, and then I'll throw it in my bucket. Now the next time I go to use this, um, instead of washing it, I'm just gonna cut that hardened paint off. And then I have another little applicator to use. So essentially I get, mm, it kind of depends on the project, but I can get six to eight um, different projects or different applications with my makeup sponges. You absolutely don't have to do that, but if you want to save yours, you can. Just a little tip. Oh, I'm going to use the pink. Okay, so I'm going to paint my scarf pink to match the background, and so I'm going to use the larger end of that makeup sponge and I'm going to dip it in my pink paint. Now a couple things here. When I dip it in the paint it is covered with paint. You can see it's got a huge glob on there. We do not want to paint with this because what will happen as we paint with this we're going to get paint all along the edges of our piece. That could be inside the the wheels, inside the letters, whatever. So we load it up and then sometimes I like to just scrape it on the edge of my pot here, but then I'm also going to tap it on my palette. And this is where that paint tray comes in handy. So once I tap it on the palette, it's offloading, but also helps the, the sponge kind of absorb that paint. So it's not just sitting on the surface here. Okay, and now when we paint with this, we're gonna get a nice even finish. And to paint with the makeup sponge, we're just gonna dab, 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 tapping on the piece very lightly. We don't wanna tap too hard that our makeup sponge gets so depressed that it starts to paint our edge. So just a really nice light tap. And then I have those nice clean edges still. And I get a nice smooth finish. Now most paints will only require um, one coat, but some colors are a little bit um, more translucent and require multiple coats. White being one of those, orange is another one that requires multiple coats. But here we go, we've got our pink. And remember, you don't have to paint your little triangle pieces. I wish I had my triangle pieces here. I'll just keep reminding you. You don't have to paint those, but don't lose those. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna set my makeup sponge down. I am done with the pink for now. And I'm gonna move on to my carrots. 
Now my carrots are big enough that I'm going to paint my carrots with my brushes. And because I have two different colors on this piece, I'm going to get out my um, round here. So you've got your liner brush and your flat. Where you feel comfortable for the next steps. Whenever I'm grabbing a brush, feel free to use whatever you want for that. And I already actually have a little round that I'm going to use. There we go. Out of my own stash here. It's not a different brush. It's just not one from the kit. So again, as you're painting, make sure that you start in the middle and kind of work your way out to keep those edges nice and clean. So I'm just going right up to the bottom of where that greenery would be, the green top. This brown has got more of a mustardy or a brown tone to it, so it covers very well. There's a lot of oranges in the lighter tones that um, typically take two to three coats to cover. And this is a little bit of a thicker paint that we're using this month. So feel free to just give it a couple drops of water and water it down if you need to. Okay, do a quick wash and then I will paint the top screen. There we go. All right, that little piece is done. And since I'm in the green, I'm just going to paint the wagon. And as you're painting your pieces, remember you can rotate your pieces to make it easier to paint along the edges. Move your pieces to fit however you need to paint. And go around that wheel there. There we go. Okay. We're done for the green for just a little bit. We'll probably come back and add some detail to, or we will come back and add some detail to the cart here in just a little bit. But I am going to grab my carrot patch letters. I did these in orange. So I'm going to grab a cut, um, a cut piece of my makeup sponge here. And again, when we dip it into that pot, there is way too much paint on there. So either um, first you can scrape it off on the edge, and then we're going to come over to this side here and tap, 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 offloading that, helping that sponge soak up that orange paint. And then we can come in and tap, tap, tap our pieces.
and I'm just using my finger to hold down the, um, I kind of use my finger right where the letter is and hold down the tape to hold down that one letter so it doesn't keep bouncing. Because if you don't hold it down, you'll notice that it starts to bounce back there. So I just move my finger down the line as I'm painting the pieces just to help it from bouncing. I just work my way down the tape. We get the carrot patch and we'll let that dry. We might not need a second coat on that, but we'll let it dry. It always um, looks a little different after it's dry. All right, so then let's go to the carrot farms and use our white. Excuse me, I needed a drink. My throat is parched. Alright, we'll grab another makeup sponge, do the same with this white, we're going to dip it in the white, scrape off most of it, offload it, getting that sponge to have a nice smooth surface to start painting our pieces. And like I mentioned earlier, white is one of those colors that you'll need probably a couple coats. I always recommend using light paint coats as opposed to heavy paint coats because applying a really thick coat of paint um, really creates kind of an uneven finish and it takes a lot longer to dry which then makes the project just a lot longer. You think you're saving time um, by uh, applying a heavier coat when in fact um, that's not always the case. Because it takes longer to dry and in actuality, excuse me, the longer the or the thicker the coat, um, you might have that surface part of the paint dry. It might feel dry to the touch, but there's still wet paint underneath that thick layer, and that can really cause issues when um, gluing, when you get to the gluing part won't have a good adhesive surface to glue to. Okay. So I have all the pieces here uh, painted. So I'm going to put that aside. And while I have the white out, let's go and paint our little bunny. I'm going to use my little round brush for this, but again, you can use whatever brush you want.
We just work our way around the little seat there. And I'm doing that same technique that I mentioned at the beginning. I'm start, I put my brush down in the middle of the bunny and I'm brushing outwards. Again, just to help keep the paint off the edges because I do not want to paint all these tiny edges. And we have a little eye here and a little nose and a little score mark for his ears. And I'll be able to see those after I paint. So I'm just gonna go right over those. Blob of paint right there. And this little bunny will require a couple coats. So it's kind of splotchy at first. Remember that first coat is always really splotchy. Don't get nervous about that. Just um, remember that second coat will really clean that up. Let's, um, we'll put aside the white for just a minute and I'm going to grab the blue and we'll paint the bike blue. We're going to work our way around the wheel. This baby blue color is so pretty, but it's one of those colors that just doesn't have good coverage right off the bat. So I probably sound like a broken record. But be patient, don't get frustrated. And with the bike, you could honestly take the makeup sponge and just paint this whole bike, gosh, even the bunny blue to start with, uh, with the makeup sponge, especially with these tiny little areas that might be helpful. And get it all painted blue Put on those layers that you want and then just come back and paint over the blue with the black as needed paint over the what with the white as needed those uh, little makeup sponges really are handy for smaller detail areas Uh, if you're using a the liner brush for this, just use light pressures. Don't go too heavy with your brush. So he's a pretty, pretty light color right now, but again, we'll, fi we'll fix that. All right, so I'm not going to paint the wheels quite yet. I want to come in with my second color of blue when that's ready, um, and then I'll paint the wheels. The wheels are black, which black covers super, super well. So this, um, we're gonna set this aside and take a look at all of our pieces and see what needs a second coat at this time. So I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna go back to my carrots and 
and my carrots actually look okay. They just need a little bit. So we're going to grab my brush and get just a little bit more. There's just a certain some areas right here and at the tops. So just kind of look at your pieces and determine what needs a second coat, okay? And then I'm going to dip my brush. I've still got the orange in. I'm going to dip it in the white. So I've got just a tiny bit of white, just a hair pin size of white on there. And I'm going to bring a little bit of white to the top. So I'm just going to do a quick little brush stroke on the top. Super light pressure. Don't get too heavy with your hand. The lighter the pressure, the thinner the line. The more you press down, the heavier the line. Okay, so I've got a little bit of white at the top. It just brings a highlight to the tops of my carrots. And then I want to put those little ridges in for the carrot. So I'm just going to start adding some little dashes on the edges there. And these are where you see those ridges in the carrots. So just a few on each carrot. Okay, and then maybe you can go down the side. So let me bring that up to you. And that's what my carrots look like. And I didn't add any more color to my brush. I just had that white and it started to fade a little bit. And so some of my highlights are a little bit lighter than others, um, but that's okay. All right, so then the green. I'm gonna go back to the green and really my green looks okay. I'll just add a little bit here and there. Okay, we've got the green tops covered in our second coat. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I still have a little bit of green on there. I'm gonna dip my brush in a, a tiny bit of that white. So just a tiny tip, just a tiny bit on the tip. <laughs> and then I am gonna start at the bottom and kind of just bring some lines out to um, show some dimension in those um, carrot, the greenery at the top there. So just starting at the bottom, dragging some lines out. Again, nice light pressure. Don't want to get too heavy. I might just need a little bit more white. As you start putting the white down, it will start to fade a little bit. So grab more if you need it. But now we have some lines in our carrot. Okay. All right, so let's go back to um, our cart here. And if there's any areas that need touching up, Then I'm going to go grab some white and bring in some white along the top of my cart. And then um, along the edge here. And I put a five in uh, on my cart, like five cents for a carrot. Um, this is totally optional. You can change the uh, amount of amount you want to charge for your carrots. Okay, and then we'll go around the wheel here, kind of where maybe some sun is coming off that. So just some thin little white lines in there. Okay. All right, so we are done with the green. We are done with the, well, let's come back to our carrot patch here and check these guys. This all looks really good. If your carrot patch needs a second coat, um, pause the video and do that. But mine looks okay, so we're gonna move from there. Then we're gonna come back to our white 
and grab our makeup sponge and put a second coat down on our letters here, Cottontail Farms. I'll put that aside. My scarf looks okay, so we're going to leave that. We've got our carrots done, so let's come back to the bunny. Let's put our second coat down on our blue bike. Another quick little tip when you're painting really thin, small detailed areas is to have the ability to put your hand on the table. Um, I rarely can paint a very nice straight detailed line with my arm upright like this. Like, you know, if you've got a lot of stuff happening right here, try and clear that out and be able to rest your hand because our hands get super heavy and we tend to start to do a little bit of a shaking uh, when we are trying to hold up our arm and paint at the same time. And also remember when you're painting these little detail lines, you don't need very much paint on the tip of your brush. So I never dip my brush all the way in the paint. I only have it right at the tip where I'm going to be applying that paint. And that just helps ensure that I'm not getting a lot of paint on my brush that's going to spill over the edge and uh, cause a mess. Almost done. A second coat is looking really good. I was thinking we would need a third coat, but coat number two is looking really nice. Okay, a nice blue coat there. All right, so what I'm going to do next then is um, I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush. Again, doing that same thing, I just want to add some highlights to maybe the top of his basket here, the top of his basket on the back. Maybe add a little bit of a highlight on the back of his seat right there. Kind of just touching some white on the handles. It just brings a little more dimension to the bike. Okay, bike is done, so I'm done with the blue. And now let's go back to the bunny, actually. I'm going to start painting the wheels, but let's get this bunny painted. So you might need a third coat. We'll see.
I think we're going to be good with just two. Keep getting these little ink globbers in my goobers in my paint here. There we go. Okay, a nice white. So let's move on to the black. We'll get the wheels painted. The nice thing about the black is it's the same color as the edge, so we don't have to be quite as uh, careful about getting paint on the edge. And we don't obviously want to have globs of paint running down the edges of our pieces, but we have a little bit more freedom and flexibility here. I am just painting right on the inside of my wheel and there is a little uh, engraved circle on the inside of the wheel where you can come in and add a little bit of gray for the spoke center. There we go. Okay. So then I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush, again not washing it. I'm going to come in and add a little bit of white in that center there. Grab a little bit more white. Do the same over here. And then um, just adding some of that white. I don't have very much left on my brush, but just a few swipes here and there kind of gives us that gray. A highlight on our wheels. That makes them look like they're turning, maybe. A little bit of some motion. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'll do a quick wash here. Um, I'm going to use the back of my brush to put his eye in. So I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of uh, paint on the back of my brush. And I'm going to dot it in that little spot there for a little eye. Okay. And then put the black away. I'm going to bring back the pink. And using my liner brush, grab a little bit of that pink. And I'm just going to follow that score line right here to add a little bit of pink in his ear. 
That's okay if it falls outside that score line. It's just really of a guide to adding a little bit of pink in his ear. Okay, and then also on the nose, I have a little bit of a pink nose, just right on the tip there. So cute, so cute. All right, one last thing. I closed up my black paint, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is create a super light gray to add some, um, I grabbed a little bit of black, tiny, tiny bit of black. I'm gonna grab some of this white, just create a super light gray. And I'm just gonna green, whoop, a little too dark. Let me get a little more white. There we go. You want it so it's almost not even a gray. It's so light colored. And we can just come in and add it along the back side of the bunny and under his bum here, under his chin, and on the bottom of his ear. So it's really a super, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it's just the small brush strokes that I did. And again, that's just to help um, bring some dimension. It makes him look a little more realistic and not so flat. Okay, there we go. Those All of our pieces are painted. Now we're going to just do our polka dots and then we glue up. So you don't have to do polka dots on yours. Um, it's just some other ideas for you. You could use your masking tape and mask out some stripes. Stripes would be super cool or super pretty um, and stylish. I've always loved stripes on things. Um, you could um, go at a diagonal, you know, just taking some masking tape here. You know, I'm just laying it out on a diagonal and then boom, boom, boom. Um, that would be really pretty too, or stripes going this way or that way. Um, so you could do that, or you could just leave it solid. Solid is super pretty as well. So for the polka dots, I'm going to use the flat brush. And that was another reason why we included the flat brush is in case you wanted to do stripes or wanted to do some other pattern on your backer board, um, sometimes a flat brush can be helpful for that. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about doing a different pattern. But I'm going to use the back of my brush here, and I'm just going to start putting polka dots out here. And I'm kind of keeping it random. I'm not really too concerned about being exact. Um, but I'm also... I don't want to have a, a massive amount of polka dots in one area and then um, not enough polka dots in the other area. So I'm also kind of thinking about that. And I can get two polka dots with one dip of the brush. Some are going to be a little smaller and again that's okay with me. Um, if you want to have more of a um, consistent size you might want to dip your brush every time. And also remember we're having the frames along the edge so don't worry about you know having polka dots right up to the edge there just keep that in mind as you're applying your pattern too if you decide to do something else okay there we go easy peasy for the polka dots all right 
So I'm going to put that aside and let those polka dots dry for just a second. Let's bring back our um, Cottontail Farm piece and we can get all our pieces glued on here and then we'll finish up the sign there. Oh, I almost forgot adding polka dots to my scarf. I'm actually going to switch to my smaller um, brush because it's got a smaller handle which will give me a smaller polka dot and for this little scarf I just want to have tiny little polka dots. All right, put that aside. We'll get to that last. We're gonna do that last. All right, so let's get our glue out. Um, if you've never used this super glue before, um, it is a individual super glue. There's no lid um, and it comes like this. So when you are ready to use your super glue, the lid has a the ability to pierce the bottle itself. So you don't have to find a needle or something to open your super glue, okay? Just screw it on and it does the work for you. The other thing to keep note of is there's no lid. This is an open applicator. So as you're screwing it on a couple different things, I'm just gonna get it to the point where it's getting starting to get tight. Hold your bottle by the seam. Don't hold it up here because as you're putting pressure on it, you're actually kind of squeezing that bottle and glue is going to come out the moment it starts to open up. Okay, so we want to hold it here to make sure we don't put pressure on the bottle. And then the other thing is just go slow as you're screwing it on and keep your bottle pointed upright. There's been a couple times where I'm like this and I'm and all of a sudden glue starts to drip out onto my fingers. It's that fast. Okay. It's, it's a thin super glue. So it, it's just going to start to squirt out. So upright, hold it by the seam and just go nice and slow. You'll hear it. And it's actually starting to bubble out a little bit, but We'll get it on nice and tight and now we're ready to go, okay? So I'm just gonna set that down and then I'm gonna take all my pieces off my um, tape here that I'm gonna start gluing. And when you remove your pieces, don't just yank them, try and slowly peel them away. Some of these pieces are a little bit delicate and you don't want them to break. All right. As you're gluing your pieces on, remember super glue is super, uh, super, super tough. So you don't need a lot. I typically just put a couple dots here and there. I don't know if you can see that on this piece. Um, as opposed to trying to cover all of these, all of the surface of that back, you do not need to do that. It will hold it without that. So then I'm just going to line that up into my score mark area here. Kind of lift it up so I can see the top there. And press. And just hold it for a second. Um, super glue is super fast drying too. So always be ready when you're placing your items to commit. You only have maybe two or three seconds to move your pieces around to the spot that you want them. So kind of be ready for that. So you don't accidentally place it down and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, that's wrong.
when I'm putting my dots of glue on my piece, I kind of think about uh, putting of my letter, the bottom, and if it's a large um, uppercase, I'll do um, one in the middle. And I also try and find the thickest parts of the letter to apply my glue to. I don't apply them to the thinnest parts because then it just seems like the glue kind of squirts out the sides and then all of a sudden, oops, um, it's kind of, you know, I got a mess there then. Cottontail Farms. All right, we'll grab the bunny next. In the middle of the bike, the bottom of the wheel, top of the wheel, at the four corners of the wagon, and the middle of the wheel on that back or on the cart. And then we'll do the carrot, and I'm just going to do the four corners, or the bottom two corners, and then the top of each of the carrot greenery parts. And it just sits right in the middle of the cart there. Okay, so f um, we'll do the carrot patch, and then we'll do the scarf. So I'm going to just take all my pieces off. Again, just gently pull them um, at an angle, slowly peeling so you're not breaking your letters. And just get them all ready in their location. And for these little letters, I'm just gonna do two little spots. That's really all they need. They're just so tiny. And if you find it's kind of hard to place the pieces, um, especially these smaller pieces, uh, you can get some tweezers. Let's see if I have them in here. Sometimes having some tweezers on hand can help hold the pieces as you're gluing and then placing them. And they actually even make tweezers, I don't know if I have them in here, that are opposite of a normal tweezer. So they're always closed and you have to press them to re release them and that really helps hold them hold the piece as well um, and then you know as you're placing your pieces if you find that you keep bumping it out of whack sometimes just using the back of your brush to just give it a little bit of a nudge is helpful too sometimes I'm just a little more shaky on some days than others um, and just can't seem to get it right in that right place Can kind of see my fingers shake today a little bit. That's what made me think of it. All right, the last C here, okay. All right, there we go. All right, so now to the scarf. And there's a, like I said, if you don't want to do a scarf, I think he is super cute without one. But if you'd like to add the scarf, you've got your two 
triangles, pretend my triangles are here. Um, and what you're gonna do to start with is you're gonna glue those little triangles on the backs of the scarf tails. So you're gonna put a triangle here and a triangle here, okay? And then once you've got those and they're glued, then you'll put a dot of glue on top of each triangle and then a line of glue where the scarf is gonna attach to the bunny. And then we're gonna just place that scarf right on the bunny here. And I'm gonna hold it for a second. And there we go. Super cute. Love this sign. Love, love, love. All right. Next, we're going to apply the centerpiece to this. And I'm going to add um, some dots of glue to both or all four corners. And then just kind of randomly inside here. Okay. And we'll line it up with our, make sure your polka dots are dried or your patterns, whatever it is. And we're just gonna hold it. I typically pull out my weights for this process so that I can move on to the next, but I'm just gonna hold it this time. Having, um, Workout weights is a great crafting tool. At least they're getting some use and not just sitting collecting dust. Okay, now we're ready for the frame. So again, we'll just grab, we'll put a couple dots of glue and actually, I'm able to do this all with one bottle here. Okay. I'm going to hold this down, make sure it's all lined up. Nice. And I'm actually going to bring out my weights for this. I was thinking I didn't need them, but I only have two hands and I have four corners. So you can use um, heavy books. You can use um, soup cans. Whatever you need. Um, and I, I also use, uh, every once in a while, a lot actually, I'll use these little clips. Um, I picked these up at the Dollar Tree and they're in the craft section. They're little clamps for crafting with. But if you don't have those, oh shoot, oh here they are. You can get these, like the bag clips. You can either pick these up at a grocery store in um, the storage section, I guess, maybe. Um, and they come in all sorts of colors. But they're great because they have that plastic coating. And so they're, they somewhat protect your piece and they're not going to gouge it. And they're actually fairly tough. So if you're looking for an easy clamp for holding your pieces down, um, and you don't have a dollar store to pick up the fun little actual crafting clamps. These work great too. Okay. I think we are done. Let's test it. It is good. All right, guys. Here is our March Joy Box. And even after all the hiccups... That happened. Um, we finished it. It is a beautiful uh, sign for spring and Easter. Um, I mean, really, this could be up all spring because I mean, it's not really Easter. So, 
You could you could display it all season. And like I said, your little e easels, your plate stands are the perfect way to display those if you didn't want to hang it. Right, it just sits right in there, holds it nice and sturdy, and there we go. There is our little Easter sign. So I appreciate you guys so much. If you have any questions about um, the video, I know it wasn't a normal video with my technical issues happening at the very beginning. Please let me know. Put them in the comments. Send me an email if you'd rather go that way. You can Facebook message me and I would be happy to answer any questions and help whenever I can. I hope you guys are able to find time to craft. And if not, don't feel guilty about that either. Um, I am a big proponent of crafting, but I'm also a big proponent of um, giving ourselves some grace. These boxes are going to be there when the timing is right for you. So don't feel bad if you can't craft right away when you get your box. At any rate, I hope you guys have a great rest of the month, and I look forward to crafting with you again. Talk to you later. Bye.